Hello, John. Maria. Hey. hey. Marie, I should say, not Marie. I keep saying that wrong. That's okay. No problem. Hello. How are you? Very well. Is that Rob Tibble hiding behind the town hall symbol? That that's me. I'm I'm uh, I'm in the orange today. Yep. Okay. All right. So is uh, Steve the only missing body right now? Sounds like it. All right, let's give him another minute, and we'll get started. Um, I'm assuming I'm assuming everyone got the message about this seven o'clock meeting at the planning board. So, I know I, I'm Steve is a participant in that meeting, so I'm assuming he's going to be looking to leave. So let's we can. I don't see any reason why we can't wrap up. It shouldn't be a sure. problem. We also have a conflict. Uh, there's another meeting uh, regarding the uh, lowlands. Uh, uh, yes, I understand. Drainage that. issue. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's figure. We'll we'll uh, we'll be done by seven. Got it. I see another phone hey number. Hey guys, uh, Steve. Steve here. I'm on. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Six exactly six p.m. Uh, okay, so did everyone have a chance to read the minutes of the March 22nd uh, meeting? Yes, I make a motion to accept the minutes as submitted. Someone want to second that? Second. Okay, let's go around. Um, all those in favor? Or I should, I'll, let's, I'll do a, a, a roll call. Marie? Aye. John? Aye. Steve? Aye. Rob? Aye. And I say aye, so prove unanimously. Okay, next order of business, yeah. It's just to continue this discussion. All right, so let's, I think we should, we need to kind of get down to the, where we were, kind of where we left off last meeting was this concept of of um, who who should and should not be allowed to operate an Airbnb or a short-term rental in town or not. Um, so by way of getting started here, right? So I, I my understanding is that the um, part of the of the process of allowing any short-term rental is that it's going to have to be listed as an accessory use in our zoning bylaw and by excess you know if if it becomes that then it's then it's an approved use but that means that if there's an accessory use and then they, there needs to be a primary use <clears throat> and i'm that this is where i think we have a conflict with someone owning a building that's only going to be an Airbnb because if that's all it does then that's not an accessory use that's a primary use and you don't want to jump in here Wayne I uh I, I agree with your 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 concern here uh and I I'll, I'll add to that uh if Nahant were to invite or I should say uh, allow uh, uh, say non-residents to have uh, properties that are doing, they're nothing but rental. Uh, we, well, I'll say non-residents, but residents, but I'll, I'll go with re non-residents as my priority. Uh, we will be in the minority as far as what other cities and towns around us have done. Uh, they, they are just not allowing that to happen. In fact, uh, from from uh, just digging through the uh, the regulations of, of I don't know four or five that I have uh, uh, pulled down data on, uh, we would be in the minority if we allowed anything uh, anything more than owner occupied or owner adjacent. Uh, there's it's it's uh, remarkable how many have have focused in on those two features, those two accessory uses. Uh, and said, "This is it." And uh, uh, so we're uh, uh, we would be standing uh, standing alone and uh, or almost alone if we were to expand that. 
Uh, Bob, uh, if, uh, go ahead. Wayne, can I ask, uh, uh, Bob, you appear to be going um, beyond the short-term rental, is that correct? I'm just speaking to short-term rental. Okay, you, you did say rental, and I'm, I'm going to differentiate between the two. Okay. All right, any, anyone else want to comment on this process? So Bob, how many, how many, yeah, so how many towns did you say you reviewed that were in the minority? Did I hear five? Uh, let's see. Lexington, Cambridge, Salem, Boston, and Newton. Do we know, is, is there, has there ever been a study on Massachusetts, how many towns allow um, those um, rentals um, as a whole? Because, you know, saying that we're minority out of five or six towns may, you know, it's important, it's, you know, interesting, but you know, as far as Massachusetts go, I wouldn't call us minority unless we actually have some real data on this. Well, I, I agree with you. I wish I had more data. And if, uh, uh, if, if it's available, I'll try to find it. But, the, you know, it's, it's not easy to find uh, cities and towns that have this uh, published online. What, what I find remarkable is, is the consistency between those that I just mentioned uh, and, and, and what they're allowing. And, and to me, it's, it's, it's a red flag. Well, I guess I guess that it, it becomes a legal question at some point because it, if indeed the allowance of the short-term rental is is being described as an accessory use, then it has that use has to be accessory to something else. And if if a building is is owned for only that one reason, then that's not an accessory use anymore. My, I mean, I mean, does anything I'm saying make any sense, or my, or am I alone in that? I, I think you're 100 percent right, uh, Wayne. I, I just, uh, is this something that I mean, you? I'm not, I'm not saying I begrudge anyone the right to to do this Airbnb thing. I think I just, I just think we need to make sure we do it correctly. Uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, did I, I haven't seen that uh, as far as uh, being published anywhere. Uh, maybe uh, did you, is this something that you came across as far as what the town is looking at? I haven't been directed in that direct, you know, to do that. I'm just saying that of the of the of the multiple city lists of regulations that I've been able to find, because a lot remember there's a lot of cities and towns around us that don't have any regulations yet, just like we don't. So you know, you can't say well everyone around us is one way or another because they, most of them don't even have regulations at all. But the ones that I've seen to be able to find, I know the city of Revere is one, and they uh, seem to be holding it to um, either owner occupied or owner adjacent. It's so that the use is accessory to some other use. If if our whole everything in the town of Hahn is theoretically zoned for single family homes. And so the only multifamily homes we have are, are pre-existing non-conforming, and which is fine. I mean, they, you know, that's I don't have a problem with that. What I'm saying is that if if our only u primary uses in town are as single family, then that accessory use has to come around uh, somehow has to involve the original use. And I just think that's I, I'm not sure how you can allow the short-term rental to happen unless they just made that another, um, they would have to change the zoning bylaw to allow it in all districts. Well, I, I think it also falls in line with another argument that, that we've seen even in the courts where uh, the, the uh, uh, non-owner occupied or non-owner adjacent uh, is, is basically strictly commercial use, 100% commercial use. Uh, and that is not consistent with, with uh, 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 residential areas. So, Guys, I guess, this is Steve. I'm, yeah. My phone cut out. I was just about to chime in. So, back with what you said about being the minority, Bob, you, it was five towns, and I've, I've looked a bit. Swampscott, I mean, right next to us, has nothing. Marblehead, I 
Um, I looked gotten- into it. I, 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 I did talk to Wayne, but Wayne said something. I called the town of Marblehead, and they said they have nothing in place right now. They did have a meeting on it, but I'm not to say that I was misinformed. Wayne did say he read something else. Lynn, I don't know if it has anything. And no, Revere, Lynn have anything either. Yeah, Revere, Revere has a clause in there that says you have to live in the city. But I did, I work in Revere on the fire department. I did talk to them. And they said if you have a someone in the city um, on as a 24-hour maintenance person, there can be a waiver for that. But they're pretty much on the hook just as much as the homeowner. Um, so again, back to Newton, Cambridge, Boston, I, I think their battle is a different battle than we're having. I think their battle is a conflict with the hotel industry. I think their battle is, you know, to avoid people from, if we had 30 Bass Point apartments, alike properties in town, I think they're trying to avoid someone going and buying that and setting up uh, a holiday inn, but just doing it on their own. Um, and Wayne, what you were saying in accessory use, I mean, these are, these are rentals. And I actually looked, I found something interesting the other day. They said that a short-term rental is defined as sometimes it's under 90 days, sometimes it's under 30. Some cities and towns call it under seven days. But if it's under 30 days, which what I found most towns to do um, if you sign somebody up on a month to month lease, they technically are a short term renter because they could stay there for one month. They're staying there for 30 days and they're gone. So I think we're using the term short term rental just ambiguously in relation to Airbnb and VRBO. But meeting number one, we had that gentleman call in and said, Hey guys, you know, keep in mind my nurses that stay for two or three months at a time, sometimes two or three weeks, those are considered considered short-term renters as well. And they're just being lumped into this. So there's, there's definitely a big overlap with short-term rentals versus Airbnb. Um, And what you guys were just saying about having it an accessory use, anybody could buy a house in the Han, a single family, a two family, and they have the right to rent it out is all we'd be doing by putting restrictions on Airbnb is just discriminating where you rent it out, you know, and how you rent it out, who you rent it to, or to what well, platform you rent it with. Isn't that exactly the whole point of this, Steve? That's exactly the point of this regulation that we're talking about. We're, that's exactly what we're asked, being asked to do. We're asked, we're, we are, at, we're being asked to discriminate against short-term rentals you're absolutely correct because yeah, to, i look at it like we're nothing we're being be just do whatever you want exactly no i i agree entirely and you know the more we've gotten into this the more i've talked to people people at town hall you know it, it is it, it never it never was even a thought of mine but it's a scary fact to think that somebody could come in here with buku bucks and buy up the entire town and just start, you know, air being, being everything. Uh, I could, I could see not doing that, but again, how do you, how do you determine that? How do you, how do you, how do you base, you know, how, how do you plan around that? It's, well, that uh, it's tough. And I think that's a task. I mean, I, unfortunately that, I think that's, that's what these other cities and towns that are, that are recalling it an accessory use and that's how they that's how they're defining it it's this use is an accessory use to other uses and it can and is controlled under a certain set of regulations i mean I, I, that so seems to go into a, if if someone had their house and they lived in it part of the year and they wanted to rent it out for a couple months in the winter would they then be lumped into this same category or just strictly for Not renting on airbnb i mean that well again i mean if well let, let's go back if so let's let's use that exact instance like you just said somebody somebody lives in the house but they but they're gonna go to florida for the winter and they want to airbnb it for the for january and february the primary use of that building has been a single family home 
So the, so the rental for some period of time in the winter would be an accessory use. It would be an incidental use to the primary use of being a single family home. And that's exactly so what they we rented it. That's the definition. They rented it. Right? But if, if they rented it for a 90 day lease, it, it wouldn't be? Excuse me? Say that I, same person rented their, their apartment for a, their home for a, a 90 day lease. Yeah. Same thing instead of, you know, instead of being on the Airbnb platform, they, they listed it for 90 days and someone rented it. Would it still be a single family or would it be an accessory but, use at that point? Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's start at the beginning. Anybody that owns a single family home in the town of Nahant can rent that out, right? They can rent out the whole house. They can't share the house, at least under what I would consider the current guidelines. But certainly someone can rent out their house for it, the, 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 prop, the issue would be then for what period of time? Wayne, I think what Steve is trying to say, and I'm not speaking for you, Steve, is that even if you have a long-term rental, for example, you could have a house, single family house rented for a year to long-term tenant, but your lease can be 30 day tenancy at will. Right. And you wanna make sure that when we decide what constitutes short-term rental, we don't run into trouble where the long-term rentals now became short-term rentals. You know what I mean? So I, well, you can I, have I, the I, same tenant for 10 years and they're gonna be month to month um, because that's your legal instrument that you're actually using. So I think the state actually in their regulation um, tried to accommodate this, I think, um, because they thought about it. Um, so I think maybe a good start would be to decide what constitutes short-term rental for the town of Nahan. Is it a rental? you know, anything below 30 days in duration or and get in line with what the state actually decided short-term rental is, or do we do something different? The state defines short-term rental as 31 days. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so anything below, be, be, below 31 days. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I read too. So um, the month of February, if you have a month-to-month -month lease, you have a short-term rental. All right. Well, that's you know, we kind of say, point. So, I don't, I don't think any. I don't think anybody's going to tell someone that rents their house on a month-to-month -month basis that that's not not right under the short-term rental rules. We, I think, we all understand what a short-term rental is. It does have an impact on what taxes are being paid, though. In what sense? That's correct. If you're oh. over 30, well, if you're calling it a, a short-term rental and you're renting it month to month, uh, to me, you're paying a lot more in tax uh, to the state as a result. But you, if, just, if you just did a regular rental, you don't have that. Okay. That's correct. I and you also have that. to register but, with the state yeah. and you also have to pay town taxes. But, the, but that's, not, that's really not the subject at hand. The subject at hand is Is a short-term rental a, a, an acceptable use, or is it going to be an accessory use? That's the that changes everything. If it's if you're gonna if you're gonna change the table of use in the zoning bylaw to say that short-term rentals is acceptable, then we we can stop this conversation because it it'll be an acceptable use no matter what in every in every building in the town of Iron. If if you if the town was to decide to, to only describe it as an accessory use, then it changes the it changes how a building can be used. So it can't be used as as a as a uh, short term rentals full time because that won't be an accessory. It'll be the primary use. And in the lo yeah the logic there Wayne sounds self explanatory. Um, however, I think at some point we'll have to make definitions up and in a definition I, I agree with right you. now, what I'm, yeah, right now, what I'm getting a short-term rental is anything on Airbnb or VRBO. Uh, and that's, I mean, could someone go out on their own and, and rent it short-term and, and, you know, well, they're, sure they're not advertising publicly and, and they're not 
paying the town any taxes and they're not doing anything. Yeah, they would, you know, they'd go off the grid and they would, they would still do that. I don't, I don't know if we're going to say it's not allowed or not. I don't know how, um, for the life of me, I couldn't tell you how we would govern that. But I think at some point we'll have to put a definition on a short-term rental. And if it states any rental under 31 days per the state of Massachusetts does, a tenant at will in the month of February would be in violation of that. Yeah, well, like I said, I don't think if that was the reason why they put 31 days there. It was just, yeah, and it was just something I read the other day. It was, you know, it it, it was an article that, that stated, you know, what, how to determine it, it. It was just an article on literally the short, the short-term rental term. And it said, what, what does that even mean? You know, in some states, some towns, it means this, some towns it means that. So I think that's maybe what we should identify first. And then secondly, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're a board of a, a great mixed board of different perspectives. And I think that's going to get us to the right conclusion here. I look at a rental for a residential application as a rental. Um, you know, if it's, if it's a short term, if it's a long term, um, it's a rental. You know, you're renting that place. The concerns with Airbnb have arise. The compliments for Airbnb has arise, but I think it'll be on us to decipher through what is what, but in either regards, you're renting it for a residential application. I think if you start cooking breakfast in there and, and you know, hosting weddings, it changes course. But as far as renting it for three nights or 36 nights, you know, you're renting it to someone to use as a res residential application and that's it. And then furthermore, um, I touched on it in the planning board meeting the other day, they were asking for updates and we had a probably a five minute discussion on it. Um, they were asking, what are the concerns? You know, what, what are the complaints now? And I said, we have, you know, we've scratched on the surface of that, but we haven't got too deep into it. And they said, well, if we pass rules for short-term rentals, are we going to be passing the same rules for long-term rentals? You know, if short-term rentals, they can't park on the street. Carry yeah. Not the short-term rental committee, but you know the planning board would have to. But um, you know that's that's a whole other thing. But one thing to keep keep in consideration with short-term rentals. That's to me. Again, you know, I'll disclose. I've I've had experience with both and with short-term rentals. The boss, you know, ultimately the town is the boss of you. So they can pass, you know, they can make some rules. They can make some regulations. They can actually fix things. Um, if it was, should we have 500 Airbnbs around town or should we have nothing? Yeah, well, nothing sounds a lot better, but I think we're losing sight that if these units aren't on Airbnb, they're still going to be rented. They still could have parties in the backyard, speed them down the street. Instances that maybe something's not getting getting rented that should, shouldn't get rented. Airbnb, you know, I think some rules, some guidelines, and maybe we'll fix some of that. And again, it's, that's my perspective. It's, you know, I can tell anybody who's interested in hearing the instances I've had, the pros and cons of either. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a whole different animal. It's not... A lot of people think it's a cash grab. It's, you know, it's a great thing. You're held to a whole different standard. You know, your, your entire house is, is judged. Your trash bins, your stairs, your parking area, you're, you're on there on a ranking system. And the people renting from you, well, they're doing the same. If they stay there and they throw a party, if you complain about them, they're thrown off the platform. And they could simply go create another name under their wife or uh, husband or whatever and get back in there. But they'll end up getting weeded out. The, the laws, again, from my experience, is you are a guest when you are a short-term renter via Airbnb, VRBO. You have a set of rules in front of you, and Airbnb strategically calls you a guest because by not calling you a tenant, there's no tenant-landlord rules or regulations on it. If you break any of the rules, you're out immediately. If your neighbor takes their unit off Airbnb and they rent it to two college kids, and they break the rules, well, you can't throw them out immediately. You know, you can't really throw them out at all. 
for having people over in the backyard or speeding up and down the street. Um, in this state, you probably would have a hard time throwing them out, period. You know, so I think we should look at Airbnb as an opportunity to maybe clean up some of that mess. You know, anybody doing it now that's doing it in a unit that they shouldn't be, as we said from the get-go, um, I think it's great that we can now get in there. Because right now, someone in the haunt could be renting a, a tent in their backyard. And if someone's willing to pay for it and somehow they get ratings that doesn't put them out of business, they'll continue to do so. But by us being able to put some form of regulation on it, we can go out there and inspect these places. That person could simply take their tent off Airbnb and rent it on Craigslist. And we're, you know, we're left in nowhere's land. Um, but luckily I don't think there's a big market to rent for short term or, or anything kind of out of the norm aside from Airbnb and VRBO. Wayne? So we, we've, yeah. we've, okay. Hold. We've, All right, Rob, go ahead, Rob. We've been working through uh, a list of definitions and guidelines uh, for the last couple of weeks. I've got them displayed now uh, as far as where this working document currently stands. Uh, and there are some open-ended uh, uh, issues that, that uh, are indicated in the right column. Uh, but it was my understanding anyway that we had a pretty good start on this. And, we do. And I You're feel like, you know, okay, good. Uh, so. Uh, Excuse me, Rob. Rob? Yep. Could I, in, in, could you indulge me for, for a minute? I'd like to clear up something that uh, Steve said that's, that's not correct. Um, it was mentioned that uh, 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 short-term rentals, uh, 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 the occupant uh, of a short-term rental is treated differently legally by the housing code, I'm assuming you meant, Steve, than a, uh, uh, a, a tenant. And the housing code deals with occupant and ver for, for very good reason. Uh, I have in, in my uh, capacity as a uh, Board of Health uh, official dealt with Airbnbs using the same housing code, using, uh, uh, they are occupants. So uh, the same laws apply. Uh, now you are certainly correct that the legal system uh, will draw out uh, a, uh, a process, but uh, an occupant is an occupant no matter how the individual came to be occupying a dwelling unit. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rob. And what I meant by it, John, I won't take too much time, was I don't know about the occupant rules and, and um, much of that that you mentioned, but for easy clarification, if you have a tenant that rents month to month or say a one year lease and they throw a party with 30 people there, you legally don't have the right to even tell their guests to leave. If they're not breaking the law, you, there's not much you can do. You can go down there, I guess, as the landlord and try to tow cars off your property. Um, but if you want that guest out of there, you're not accomplishing it that night. That's for certain. Um, I wouldn't ponder to guess what the court system is gonna do if you go before a, a judge for a, a housing court and say, this guy had a party, I want him out. Um, but without even going down that road and trying to guess what that judge is gonna say, if you have that same unit and it's on Airbnb and they have a party with 30 people, it states in Airbnb's by, rules and regulations, if anybody is on or in the premises, aside from the listed guests, that's a violation. And it also states that anybody that violates any of the rules or regulations set forth by Airbnb or the host, are, their stay is immediately over and they're now trespassing on the property. So again, if scenario one verse two, one, I don't think the party's getting shut down that night unless there's a noise ordinance in place. When scenario two, if one person if, if someone has an Airbnb with two bedrooms and four guests, if they have a fifth person in the house, they're now trespassing. If, if you want to go that route, there's no lease. There's no anything They're They're just trespassing on the property. No, 
Okay, Rob, let's get back to you. No, no rebuttal. No, I'm. I'm... Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I just I just bring that up, this up as as far as uh, 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 make sure that we're still on the same track here as far as definitions that we've come up with. Now, I agree. Uh, I, I agree that there is uh, there's some trimming up to do here as far as uh, what we had talked about in the last couple of, of uh, uh, meetings. Uh, and we've got a little bit of overlap as far as additional draft items where we went through another set of definitions. As, uh, and, uh, you know, it's, they're very, very similar. In this case, it's 28 days. Uh, in this case, uh, gosh, I can't even remember. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, little little things that that needed to be uh, uh, pulled together. In this case, we had uh, the operator of an owner adjacent short term rental shall keep accurate books. What info was to re required? We got some more information from uh, from Cambridge on that. Uh, we have regulations uh, as far as uh, uh, shall have the authority to promulgate regulations. We have a question as far as who would be the commissioner of inspectional services. Uh, but uh, I, I, I would, I'm hoping that, that, you know, this is, this is a foundation because quite honestly, I, I'd like to start putting this into a, a document uh, that uh, we can, we can start uh, referring to and, and build out on. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the uh, restrictions are concerned on the type of, 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 uh, uh, of uh, or I should say just restrictions in general, let's say, uh, we see an awful lot of this as far as, well, like, like Linfield, right? Linfield, uh, they basically just said that uh, uh, they, don't, they don't want uh, uh, Airbnb period, or I should say short-term rentals. I'm sorry, that was incorrect. They don't want short-term rentals at all in residential areas. They ruled that out in 2016. Uh, and uh, their, their town meeting voted 152 in favor and 11 against. Uh, so uh, they, they've got the situation all wrapped up. They don't have to worry about anything uh, that, that we're talking about now. Uh, in, in respect to uh, Lexington, uh, they put uh, regulation in place in 2020. Uh, operator occupied and operate adjacent short-term rentals are permitted as an accessory use to a permitted principal residential use, period. That's it. That's as far as they want to go. Uh, Cambridge, we've already talked about, only operator occupied short term rentals and owner adjacent short term rentals are permitted, period, that's it. Salem hosted rental, there is no maximum limit to the number of days within a calendar year and accessory short term rental may be rented when the resident family is present and as a host, multiple bookings at any given time uh, by more than one group or guests are allowed. Uh, non hosted rental. This is basically, again, there's use, they're calling this an accessory use. It's, it's uh, the primary use is residential. And they're basically saying that you can be out of that place for 95 days. Uh, but uh, anything more than that uh, is, is not going to be allowed. Uh, Boston, very, very neat and trim. Boston, non, no, non owner occupied commercial SDRs is not approved. Uh, in Newton, proof of residence. When registering a short-term rental, an operator must provide evidence that he or she resides in the dwelling unit for a minimum of nine out of 12 months during each calendar year as demonstrated by at least two of the following. And then they get into the list of what you need to show them. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, there's, there's all sorts of, 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 of potential back-end issues that are going on here. But quite honestly, I think it has to do with control. Uh, I think it has to do with enforcement. I think it has uh, uh, that, that, that they're recognizing the issues here. As, as, you know, if, if, if you've got skin in the game, if you've got ownership, if you've got the people that are uh, on the property are either living in it or next door to it, uh, then you've got, you've got a great deal more leverage than you have if that person is, is uh, on the other side of town or on the other side of the United States for that matter. Uh, you're, 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 you're losing your leverage. And quite honestly, I, I'm going to throw in one more point here uh, that uh, I have very little confidence that Nahan is going to be able to uh, effectively manage anything like this. And, and by in saying that, I'll go back a little bit as far as the history on this, on this issue, uh, which uh, currently under the zoning bylaws is being allowed 
uh, as uh, borders and lodgers. Uh, and the restriction here is zoning by law, two rumors, no separate entrance, cooking facility of resident family. That's how far it goes now. I don't know how well that's being enforced. Uh, if we just take a little bit of a sidestep, we've got a home occupation, zoning by law, home occupation, no more than 25%. I don't know how well that's being enforced. I don't know if, if that's even been an issue in the past. But if we look back to 1993, and yes, we've been at this since for almost 30 years, as far as bed and breakfast, the Board of Health, uh, which is the Board of Selectmen, had their regulation, which said two rooms, two persons, licensed by the Board of Health after a public hearing. Uh, in 1994, town meeting, Article 25, the planning board put up a, uh, a zoning change saying uh, for bed and breakfast, four or fewer guests, uh, guest rooms, eight or fewer adults, licensed by special permit only. Uh, is, uh, we've, we've been there. Uh, we, we came back up in, in 2013, uh, at which point uh, the, the, uh, the original, uh, well, let's see, uh, let me go back here. As far as the, the uh, uh, zoning, uh, zoning board in, 2000, in 1994, that was indefinitely postponed. I have the minutes from that meeting and, and uh, one of the planning board members was asked why they, they voted to, uh, they asked the town to vote and have it indefinitely postponed instead of putting it to a regular vote. They did it because they didn't think it had any chance of passing. Uh, the uh, Board of Health regulation was uh, either repealed in 2005 or 2013. Unfortunately, they lost, uh, it reportedly was repealed in 2005 and then it was uh, uh, repealed officially again uh, in 2013. The issue was handed to the planning board and nothing has happened until now. Uh, so I, I honestly, uh, I, I wanna cut, a, cut every break mm -hmm. that I can here but I'm really worried the town is not going to be able to manage this. And, and uh, so I'm proceeding with as much caution as possible. If you want this to succeed in town meeting, then you better be able to demonstrate to the town that you can control it, period. I can't, I can't disagree with you, Rob. And good points, Rob, but I, I think in okay, so B and B is far, far far different I, you know I, I think when you're talking of someone sleeping in the same quarters and waking up and having a meal cooked for them I mean I think it's also kind of good to understand that some of the bigger towns we're talking about Cambridge, Boston, Newton they have different population than Naha right you have a lot of college kids you have sport games, you have concerts, you have nightclubs, you have bars and entertainment. So when folks talk about owner-occupied owner or an accessory building, um, yeah, if I was downtown Boston, I wouldn't want my big apartment building rented out on a nightly basis because you get a bunch of people coming you know, in all sorts of shape and making noise. So... I am not sure we actually know why Nahand has this largest um, regulation and it's hard to go to 1990s. So does anybody actually know why Nahand has this in place? What was the concern? Is it a concern today? So I would look at it you know, from today's perspective. Um, what does Nahand look like in comparison to these other cities? And why is this relevant? So for example, we just underwent a big pandemic. Do you want to share your kitchen with some folks who are spending a weekend in your house um, and be disinfecting everything every five minutes? Um, so stuff like this, I think really needs to kind of be taken into account. We live in 2022 um, and this rumors, um, borders larger section of the zoning is clearly not enforced if we have all these you know, Airbnbs in town already. Um, and I'm not sure what kind of an issue, you know, that would be. So anyway, so that's just my five cents to find that we're definitely a different makeup of a town. Um, noise is a concern, parking is a concern, and then losing some properties to long-term rentals is a concern, right? So I can understand that for Nahant, but you know, being concerned about Salem and Boston, Cambridge, when they have a ton of college kids 
and people go into different events and tourists. I don't think that's a comparison to Nahant. I think the major difference that we have between Nahant and these other communities is that they have code enforcement agencies that do this full time as far as uh, uh, pursuing these issues. Nahant has a couple of part time people that have full time jobs doing other things. Uh, so we're already starting off on the wrong foot here. Uh, what we don't what we all have in common is that we're we're basically getting uh, uh, customers uh, from the Airbnb or other electronic platforms. We're not we're yeah, uh, we're not going to get different people here because this is not hot. Uh, the, these people that are that are renting through these agencies, they go everywhere. Uh, and I don't know what problems they're having, but you know what? I suspect that these other other communities do have a pretty good uh, feel for it because they have people watching it full time. And this is what they've come up with for regulations to try and control it. Yes. The hot, the hot, I mean, no matter what, Sorry, guys. enforcement is going to be an issue. And, that, and that's where this, you know, annual registration thing is going to come into play. If, if you have to reapply for, the, for your permit on an annual basis, then if there's, if there's issues, then those, that's when the issues will come up. And I, and I think uh, just to add to that, Wayne, whenever there is a renewal, whenever there is a permit issued, and we see, I've, I've got uh, some, some uh, uh, examples from other communities on this with respect to a butter list. Uh, and nothing goes forward without a hearing and nothing, nothing happens without the abutters being notified, whether it's the, it's the issuance uh, or, or an application for a new license or the renewal of a license, the abutters are notified so that they can voice their, their, their thoughts on the issue. That's uh, Steve here. I mean, that's great, but we, we can't do that with long-term rentals. So again, well, that's, that's I, I don't I don't I don't not think, talking about yeah, long term think, rentals. No, I understand that. But we we can't we can't tell someone now with a single family, a two family owner occupied owner adjacent. We don't tell them if they can rent it. We don't make them go before anybody. Or anything I from experience and it, it could be uh, one sided. I have not seen a different population of people via airbnb or vrbo this we've if i were to draw a picture or, or write a script for what i think we've described so far it seems like we're assuming every airbnb is the worst case scenario in the world um you know nuisances speeding parties parking on the street um but i think what this board what the committee ought to do is Maybe take a step back and say, let's look at the places that are here now. Let's see how they operate. Let's see what they have done. Because you're right, we, we're going to struggle with uh, two part-time enforcement officers uh, out there and tackle this. But currently, we have zero enforcement agencies. Well, I'm sorry, we, we have the Board of Health and people renting apartments should by the Board of Health before re-renting re it. But there's no one running around this town right now enforcing rules or regulations on a month to month on a year long lease on a someone who stays for the winter while the homeowner comes back for the summer we have nothing happening like that and well, that's, that's there's no probably rule. problems that there's probably issues but i don't think that airbnb is going to exacerbate them i think that whatever problems we have now are going to be the same problems for airbnb they're going to be the same problem for a month to month lease a one year lease Again, I, I can tell you, going off of Airbnb and having someone that's going to get a rating for them and they're going to give a rating to you, there's a different, there's a different aura there. As soon as they come there, they know they're not, it's not their neighborhood, it's not their house. You know, I don't think it's, it's every single instance is, is a reenactment of Animal House and they pull up and, and go crazy. There's a lot of states. I did see places like Nashville and things. They have different Airbnb rules, but there's a whole lot of stuff going on down there. Las Vegas, you know, I don't think Nahant's quite on the map with them. Rob, you've done a lot of groundwork, but you've picked maybe the five strictest towns in Massachusetts against Airbnb. 
you know, if we drive down the causeway, the first place we touch has no rules. So I wouldn't say, hey, let's copy yeah, Lynn and have no rules. But maybe somewhere in the middle. All right. So, well, we seem to be just hovering around the same topic. So let's 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 hold on this one for a few minutes and let's go down to something next on anybody's list, because we don't have that much time to go. We're, we're, uh, we're going to be out of here at seven. So does anyone else have a, another topic that we think needs to be discussed right now? Certainly someone's got one. All right, Wayne, I have something. Go ahead. Uh, today, and, and this is completely uh, not connected with uh, anything we've spoken of uh, this evening. Uh, but today I learned that uh, the state uh, community sanitation program, a subset of the Department of Public Health is uh, revising the state pool code and will be recommending that um, the, the, the future uh, uh, pool code requires uh, that uh, swimming pools at short-term rentals be uh, inspected and permitted oh, by local boards of health. Okay. Uh, also, there are instances uh, around the state of uh, owners of swimming pools just renting out the pool itself on a private property. And uh, uh, the recommendation will, will be that uh, that practice will need to be uh, permitted and uh, the site be inspected. <clears throat> so just add that to the, to the mix of uh, attention that this is getting at the state level. Okay, and sounds good. It, yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's significant in its long-term implications. Right, and that, and that again, it kind of brings us back to the, I think one of our first meetings was that you know, you, if you go on some of these sites, in theory, you could be you could rent a treehouse. Well, we don't need tree. We don't want people renting treehouses. So we do. We have to. We do have to. Exactly. At least at some point, we have to define what is rentable as a short-term rental, and what is not rentable as a short-term rental. You know, like you said, that that tent in the backyard is not a habitable space. I'm sure we. I'm sure and just we can... touching on what what John said. John, I read something of that sort too in regards to short-term rentals. I don't know how many pools we have, but what they did in maybe it's something the town's interested in. I think they this town mandated it for any um, form of rental, whether it be short-term or long-term. Instead of let's say you, John, or you know you, Wayne, you probably have no interest or time or potentially knowledge to go out, you know, you're not going to go out and, and put a dipstick in a swimming pool and check it. So this town stated uh, a pool or anything alike, that person has to have it professionally maintained and tested and they have to submit those test reports. That way you guys are given something in hand. And again, I think that's a great idea for short or long-term rental. Um, you're given something in hand and you know, the town is trying to do their due diligence with assisting these homeowners to make sure if they have a space that includes a pool, that's part of the rental, they're doing their part of keeping up on it. So someone, you know, isn't going in there and getting sick or the kid's sick or, or something like that. So, you know, might, might be an, an easier way. It puts a little bit of a cost burden on the people, but if you're renting somewhere with a pool, you're probably paying more anyway. So. Right. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else want to jump in on that? Any other topics that we want to bring up specifically? Open up the floor. Yeah, I would. Yeah, look, could I'd like to invite uh, our non committee members if they want to uh, have a question or voice a concern. Can, Hi, this uh, is Susan. This is Susan Casivio um, on the yes, Ellis Road. Go ahead. Um, Susan. I just, I just wanted to give you the update on um, our latest um, visitors next door. Um, so every weekend now, it seems like the house is rented out. And this weekend we had um, a group of guys show up. Um, there's parking for four cars. There was five cars. 
um, they were pretty quiet um, until the food truck pulled up and they hosted a um, type of food gathering in the front on the on in the driveway. Um, so my point is that as a homeowner, you know, I lived next to my neighbors for years and they'd have parties and we'd have parties and we'd invite them and they'd invite us and there was mutual respect. But every weekend now I sit here and I wonder what's coming in next. And I just heard about you know, the, you know, the Airbnb in Houston um, that was on the news this morning where the 16 year olds rented it and they ended up having guns and shooting out and everything. I mean, every every single weekend I have to sit on edge wondering what is coming in next door to me and and what what the ramifications are. And I have to be looking out the window and making sure, you know, my daughter is safe coming in and out of the house and the cars are locked. And it's just, I, I just, you know, from the standpoint of someone who's living beside it, I just thought um, it would be useful to hear what, what keeps going on and what it's like to actually have one of these next door to you. Yes, thank you, Susan. And that's, this is exactly the activity that we wanna be able to, to control through this registration process. Because it, obviously if we do nothing, it's gonna be the wild, wild west. Whether it's- Well, that, well that's I, it, I mean- you, know, you, was... might, you, might go, you might go, you know, 10 weeks in a row and have wonderful people come next, you know, next door to your house. I, but you also could do it the other way around. You could, you know, you, you could be, you could run a whole slew of, you know, just bad guess. And, and right. if that's the case, then, you know, when that, when that renewal comes up, you know, it, it gets denied. Right. And there's no, but there's no recourse right now. There's nothing for me to do. You're, you're absolutely there's no, correct. There's no complaining I, unless it's a, a noise ordinance issue um, past 10 o'clock or whatever the rules are. Um, no. I totally understand. And, and that house next to you is exactly the situation that we were just talking about. Yeah. It's been, been purchased for, for one purpose and one purpose only to be in a, to be a short-term rental unit. Exactly. There is no owner occupancy of any description. So that's, that, that's the reason why so many of these communities are saying that it needs to be some kind of, you know, owner occupancy requirement in, in the rule somewhere. Well, and the other the other thing that's an issue is Airbnb requires you to notify your neighbors and your abutters that you're turning this into an Airbnb, and um, you know oh. we've had we've had no notification. We had no idea that it was an Airbnb till we figured out there was just different people in there every weekend. So, I, I, I don't you. know too if there's. That's probably not a bad thing, but I don't think um, Airbnb has any regulations that say to inform your neighbors. They're, they're pretty black and white, and you have to register with the state, and you have to provide them with your ID number and such. Um, I don't believe that they say, you know, notify your neighbors. And furthermore, if they said that, you know, maybe maybe they do have that, but obviously your neighbor showed the easy way around it. So that would seem to be a big fault on Airbnb's part. So again, I, I I've never seen that. I don't know if it okay, is I'm actual, pretty, I'm but pretty, I'm uh, maybe sure not that a bad I idea. Read that there. Okay, I could be wrong, well, Marie, but... do you have any knowledge of that? I have not seen it, but Airbnb updated their terms and conditions recently, and these will become effective. I think in April. So it may be a new addition of some sort. I'll take a look at the terms and conditions again. I haven't seen that actually in okay. the Airbnb. All right. Well, well and that may be another thing to keep in mind for Nahant, right? So that at least the owner, whatever way, you know, the, the ownership is that they notify their neighbors. So at least the neighbor knows who to call. Um, I kind of wonder if your neighbor even knows um, this happened, right? 
Um, may not well, be a bad idea to think about inviting some of these homeowners that have had issues in the past that the town knows of or Susan just described and bring them up to this board and have them provide an explanation of how they're handling these issues. Yes, I think that's a good idea, Marie. All right, is there anyone else in the uh, non-committee uh, group here that would like to throw something in? We've got a few more minutes. No, okay. All right, so, uh, and committee members, uh, anything else you wanted to touch upon before we adjourn? I'll say um, we did receive an email a few weeks back, um, which sparked my interest. It was someone stating that uh, there was a house on Willow Road that was doing Airbnb and there was a large amount of guests coming and going and the house was uh, three times the size. Um, the house they referenced has never, I, I know the owner, they, they, they claimed at least that they've never had an Airbnb posting for their house at all. Um, they've never had a VRBO, so might be interesting to, you know, ask that homeowner if they're renting it on some other platform. And, um, you know, if they're doing so again, it raises the question of how are we going to fix that if there is an issue or, you know, address the concerns. Um, and secondly, the letter from Turnstone, I, I received that, of course, we all received it. That was in regards to an Airbnb, my fiance hosted. Um, I don't host it. I've never dealt with anyone personally, but that place I know has had uh, maybe 70 to 80 guests. Um, it's really not active now. It's not active this time of year. Um, but the people that I heard that have stayed there, I, I hate to sound overconfident, but there hasn't been a single issue. Um, that's good. Thing. 80, yeah. Right. And I think, and I think also just by definition of a smaller unit, you know, that's going to, that, that can accommodate fewer guests is going to end up having fewer issues because if you have a larger dwelling that even, you know, that can handle a bigger crowd, then that, that's where your noise is going to be generated. And again, you know, this, and this is all something that we need to at least consider, you know, relative to the regulations. I'm again, you, I, we, you know, I don't think we're going to, we're not going to be able to say, you know, you can't have a party, you know, regulations, but you know, if too, too many parties might get your, might get your permit uh, squashed on a renewal. Yeah. So, and I can, I can, I can say from my kind of secondhand experience, I think the most, influential rule or regulation that we could go forward with is limiting just that limiting cars and limiting guests and if the town says in a perfect world the town could say hey you have an airbnb license but you know before we grant it to you you have to post these rules and regulations in your airbnb and they have to be posted there maybe even say they have to be posted at the apartment um you know at least that person is doing their part because I will say my fiance did bounce off me, you know, a few times she brought up just in conversation, maybe venting that people would incline. It was a studio apartment and you would get four people, uh, me, my brother, his wife, my boyfriend and our baby. And, you know, the answer was always no. It's a two person limit. And that's two people, whether it's a six year old or a 66 year old, you know, a person is a person and that's it. And that's, probably a huge reason for the success you know i know the more people the more they're going to offer you know if, if you're taking a four bedroom house and sticking 12 people in it you know five hundred dollars a night sounds a lot better divided by 12 than it does six so people are always going to try to push the envelope and, and they could they could message one of the airbnb hosts and say hey i know you say six guests but would you allow eight we'll pay an extra hundred dollars and you know unfortunately there's some people doing this to pay their bills. There's some people doing this to offset their income, whatever their situation is. So the opportunity to grab some cash is out there. And right now there's nothing stopping them. There's nothing telling them no. I think a huge thing is going to be telling people what they can and can't do. And again, you know, then 
we go from there. We set some rules and we see if there's still these issues. Uh, Sue, you know, as far as having a food truck on your street, I don't know if that's entirely legal. You know, I would say if somebody that lived in the house was going to do it, but I see an Airbnb guest wanting to do it as well. Yeah, but would I want to see that every single weekend? You know, absolutely not. You know, how, how I look at it is these Airbnbs should be rented not for outdoor space, not for parties, not for functions, just for someone that's coming in town for a wedding, a funeral, to visit, to think of buying, to reminisce where they grew up as a child, you know, stay, pay the town a little fee, shop local, and see you later. You know, don't, the, to me, I say, you know, and I think everybody on the board, the, the residents, are first and foremost. This is, you know, I, I would never support something that was going to torture the town. Right. Let me let me just toss out that uh, in these last two examples that we have quite a disparity as far as the neighborhood is concerned. In one instance, we have a commercially zoned area that's uh, become obviously very accustomed to lots of activity uh, on the street. Coming and going is part of being in a business district. Whereas uh, in Ms. Casivio's uh, example, this is, a, this is a, a neighborhood. This is a single family residential. Uh, so the, the difference uh, is striking uh, as far as having uh, a, a, a heightened level of activity around a private residence. Uh, just, just, just a thought there. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah sure. There is a difference. Yeah, sure. no, but it's different. I understand that completely. Absolutely, and I, I strong, strongly agree. I, there, there are other tenants in the house. Um, there's one person that's lights out at eight o'clock at night and has been there forty so odd years, um, and of course, you know they're community feel and, and you know, feeling in, uh, for or, or appreciation for quiet enjoyment of their house is first and foremost. And, and um, again, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want it to happen anywhere, even if downtown is much busier, you know, you have people coming and going, there's stores and stuff, but still there's people in that house. And if the people in that house are being tortured, you can rest assured the landlord's probably going to be more tortured than if he just lived there himself. Um, you know, and, but again, I, I think it all starts with setting down a good foundation for anybody coming in there, setting a good set of rules and, you know, not exceeding the capacity in, in which is going to start to create a nuisance. Okay. All right. So, um, we're, uh, going past our, a lot of time. I know Motion Steven, to adjourn. Steven, Steven has a meeting to go to <laughs> another one. Yeah, motion to adjourn. Anybody uh, else wants to join? It's public. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a motion to adjourn from Rob. Second. Anyone want to that? Okay. John, is that you seconding that? Yeah. All right. So uh, let's run through the list again. Um, Steve, yeah. what say you? Aye. Is that an aye? Aye. Aye. Murray? Sorry, yeah. Aye. Murray? Did I lose you, Marie? Aye. Okay. Uh, John? Aye. Rob? Aye. And I'm also an aye. So, aye. Uh, I will declare this meeting adjourned at 7.02 p.m. Oh, wait a minute. We didn't set a date. Well, we're still 20. What is it, Rob? Tell me the it's date. It's the uh, second, second and fourth Tuesday of the month. So we're looking at... The 26th. 26th. Yep, you're right. Sound right? Everyone got that? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, guys.